to this episode of The Sports Zone. I'm Rachel Franks. And I'm Tamis Bills. On today's show, you get to hear from some Hokie fans, players, and students about what type of songs get them in the sports zone. Well, then you get to hear us discuss some of today's topics in sports. Next, you get to see our Pros vs. Joes competition with safety Kashawn Jarrett. On the bus ride back from Roanoke, I listened to the... Uh, not that it was the same album for Drake. It just keeps me in like a, a mellow mood. And then once I get in the locker room, I start listening to Meek Mill. Um, one a particular song, it's called Used To Be. And um, that just gets me in my, just listen to Meek Mill and like Joel Santana, uh, artists like that. Enter Sam. Enter Sam, of course. Hey, as teenage. well as old school hip hop, like The Roots and- Teenage Mickey Wasteland. Smalls. Teenage no, Wasteland. Nothing, nothing like that gets you hype in the morning. Nothing gets you hype in the morning. Um, and then the comes on will hype me up, doesn't matter what it is. Anything that I'm doing, any, works. Anything that relates to that stadium right there, just is exactly. it's legendary. It's, it's legendary. This is hokey football. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. That's how we do. Uh, we really like Rihanna. <laughs> we think Ratchet. We I mean, think Ratchet. Gucci. What's your top Ratchet song? Um, hey, ladies, it is. Okay. It okay. makes me AOD, it does. Okay. All right, wait, sing that for me real quick. I don't know. Okay, how now, ladies, uh, you know you <laughs> bad. Like you need 20 bucks to say Just the band music. Yeah. Yeah. about what gets us in the zone. Tamiya, what's your favorite pump up song? I don't know, like I don't have one pump up song. It really depends on like where I'm going and what I'm doing. Some songs I won't name so I won't be judged. But you know, um, it's a lot of different uh, songs that I listen to for different occasions to get in the zones. Uh, just a competitive thing. Some Drake gets me, you know, in the mindset to get going, but my like, one classic song that I always listen to, and no matter what the occasion would be, is Keep Your Head Up by Tupac. That's my song. I love Tupac for them, so. Well, I also love Tupac, but he's usually not my top choice for, like, pumping myself up, I would say. Not a big fan of Drake, but, I mean, Anderson Man always gets me pumped up. Brings me back to football season. Um, I really like Remember the Name by Fort Minor. Oh, it's a really, I always used to listen to it before basketball games. It's good. So we want to thank everyone who participated and answered our questions about what songs get them in the zone. Now we'll discuss some of today's topics. Okay, so the first topic we're going to talk about is Jameis Winston. Um, there's been some news about he has like a sexual assault allegations, and I've looked into it at least from what, at least what I'm seeing. It's like a lot of like made up stuff, and the actual like if you look at the case, it doesn't seem like he's really going to be a suspect at all. Yeah, I I think this is very interesting. It's, it's a lot of debate going on about like how much he should say because obviously he's like using his right to not speak to the police and um people sound like oh he should if it was me i would have said something like i wouldn't have let it go on where people like accusing me of rape because that's such a strong allegation blah 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 and obviously like i feel like now he's at a point where why would you even entertain this right now like he has to be focused like even like addressing it would take him off, you know, if you if you're in this zone, you need to be in this zone. Like, don't even worry about the rest of this stuff because this will get handled. And apparently, they already thought it was taken care of previously because it went away for a while, and um, then now it's resurfacing. So people are like skeptical about why is it coming up right now? You know, why he's like it can hurt his husband, candidacy, and all of this other stuff. So I think it's just a lot of interesting stuff going on. It's from what I just what I um, researched about the case. It just seems like there's a lot to be learned. Like, it's not a lot that a lot of people know. The story recently broke from TMZ, which is like, ghost. To I'm, I'm just like, it's just so much that still needs to be learned. Like, um, clearly the, the Tallahassee Police Department turned it over to the state, and um, that went without Winston's, uh, his parents knowing about what was going on. So that's why it's back up again. But I just feel like nobody actually knows, you know, what the details of the case are. So that it's in the media right now and people are judging him based on that. I just think that's like sad yeah. to see. 
Well, from what I read, the description of the suspect is like um, a six foot, like 250 pounds, and he's like six four. He's like 180 pounds. It was or actually shorter than six feet. It was like five nine, five eleven, and 240 pounds, and he's uh, six four and like two eighteen or something like that. So he's obviously taller and leaner. But the thing, the argument that people are making, the counter argument that people are making about that is like. It also depends on like where the victim was, like yeah. what she laying down, what she standing up. And my thing is like, I mean, you know, you I I that's just so like iffy to go back and forth on like if you with, with the whole rape thing. Like it's a lot of people who want to put their own opinion in that, but they haven't been in that like situation to know. But like, I don't think she would get a six four guy mixed up with five nine five eleven. Yeah, and um. I just think that's great. And he obviously a much heavier guy, but maybe it could have been a physical. I don't know, because clearly the story isn't clear. I know that the attacker said previously, like, she they say he she named him as being involved, but they didn't say, she didn't say he was the one. Or, you know, so it's just, what is the extent of his involvement? And if you look, the case was closed, because this happened last January, and the case was closed and was only reopened after media inquiries, I believe. Yeah. So, I, that's a debate that I've researched a lot too, is that the case wasn't actually closed. So, um, if you like don't dismiss it, or if you don't like, um, you know, file a charge against anybody, then it's not a closed case, per se, because it hasn't been dismissed. But I just feel like, I mean, it was it was dormant. Like it was like clearly, it wasn't like it was like an active. You no, know, it was an active pending investigation. But they turned the case over to the um, state, and so that's how it it got back. I don't know if the media inquiries is what actually. I mean, that's clearly probably what brought it to the light. Uh, yeah. You know, but especially with TMZ being the people that <coughs> broke the story. Yeah, but I don't know why I, they're saying like his lawyer has found. Um, or has two people who uh, whose stories account for his story and like it'll match his story so he'll be you know clear of it and stuff but I think I feel like it's just so sad that people just want to paint like it's so much motivated for people to like try to tarnish somebody's image and like you we don't know what we weren't there so how can we prejudge you know mm -hmm. via the media like we don't know and I know it's a lot of comparisons about like how how much Florida um, State Administration already knew about the case. And like, why aren't they, are they treating him? Are they letting him still play because he's a high profile quarterback or what have you? Like, what do you think, have you heard about that? I have, from at least what I can tell is like, they really haven't gotten involved and in like, I think because he's not charged of anything, they can't, they're not gonna suspend him for being possibly accused, possibly, like you can't, like you can't force the school to uh, sit down their Heisman candidate because someone said he might have raped them. Yeah, and they're like, but and a lot of people are comparing it to like other schools who have done so. Like I think like Ohio State and mm -hmm. whoever the guy that hit the girl, but he wasn't charged for it yet, and they suspended him for three games or however many games before he even was charged. You know, so they like people are like, well, did they do their own investigation or did they decide to set out and not do an investigation just because that's a Heisman um, quarterback? And I just feel like. Like people are like, oh well, that's suspect if you don't sit him down beforehand. And I'm like, why would you treat your player as a criminal when there's no criminal charges against them? You know? Yeah. But then they're like, well, did they just take his word for it? I do think they should have conducted their own investigation. But what? How? How? I mean, what would the extent of the investigation have been? Like you, pretty much, it would be his word against hers. hers. Like he says, she. It's not like they can go swap her and go do DNA <laughs> tests and stuff like that. So that's just. Well, that's that's another issue. Is it happened so long ago? Yeah. Like you, I mean, you can't do DNA stop tests, but it happened so long ago that like, why would now be the time to suspend him? If they were gonna like do whatever, punish him in some way, it should have been back um, when the allegations were first coming out, not now because the media has gotten a hold of it. Yeah, I mean, when when I went, that's what people have been complaining about. Like they should have suspended him much more sooner than like. Now they shouldn't have waited till it came out to mm -hmm. address it. They should have said something previously. So I mean, I mean, because that has been precedent at other schools, but they're not the other schools, so you can't assume that everybody's, you know, sports administration is going to handle it the same way. So 
I don't know. I just don't think he should be like people are just full treating him as a criminal before he's even criminally charged with anything. And and I also just can't get with the people who like he needs to say it wasn't him because clearly he had like clear like how many times will he need this? Who is he? Because either way, whether he says it or not, like y'all gonna believe what y'all want, which is already happening right now. You know, like people want to say what they want. They want to say he did or he didn't do it, but. Like, I don't think, I honestly don't think he needs to be speaking out about it right now while he's still, you know, in season and while he still has so much at stake, like, play the game and let, that if you're innocent, it's going to play out, you know, so. I mean, and, like, with, with him saying something really make a difference, like, even if he did right. it, it's not like he would admit to doing it. So, either way, he would be saying he's not doing it. So, just by not saying anything, he's keeping himself out and he's like, keeping more media from attacking him, I think. And also just, what's sad is even if he turns out to be innocent, this is gonna follow him, like this is gonna be part of his reputation now. Right. That's, people are always gonna mention, like say he goes on to play in the NFL and does well, people are always gonna be like, oh, well, he's a rapist. Remember that time he got accused? Yeah. And it's just so sad because it'll hurt him either way. Like this is damaging either way. And I think this probably why people want him to speak up because it's damaging. Like it's an attack on his character, and that's you know that affects everything. Like that affects your draft stock. Like that affects your housing candidacy. It's actually people who said they're not going to vote for him until this has you know panned out. And so that I mean clearly is going to hurt him either way. And that is you know what's sad about it because we. Paul's living in a society where you're, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty, and he hasn't been proven guilty. People can't even come up with the facts of the case, like, correctly. So it's just, it's sad that, that uh, this is what's going to follow him, and it's so, we so quick to paint these people as, like, criminals, and we know nothing about, like, the case, the case at all. So we're going to move on to a lighter topic. Our women's basketball team is 3-0 and right now. They're doing a great job, and they've beaten... Um, Florida State la or Florida last night, which was sort of a bigger win because Florida is a better team than the other teams they've been playing. What do you have to say about the women's basketball team, Tamia? I think it's surprising, actually, that they're doing so well. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely good. It's definitely surprising. I, it's a lot of new talent on the team that are like, you know, they're really stepping up. and really, I mean, Uju, she's already been a, a great performer. Like, that last year it was just like she used to just make buckets happen from like no you know from she just come out of nowhere and make a bucket happen but it seems like she has that kind of like support system now that she and Monet's back but I feel like it hasn't really been about Monet as much as it's been about like the new girl from Australia and like Uju like that whole dynamic it's a really I it's I'm really you know excited to see them throughout the season and see how they you know stand Further on, once we get into ACC play, because we know the ACC is a much tougher division than what we've been. Yeah, women's basketball in the ACC is really good. I'm really excited. I knew they were going to be better. They have Vanessa, the new freshman um, point guard from Australia, who was extremely impressive last night, had over 20 points. Um, but just the whole team seems to be playing better together. It seems like it's not just Mo scoring everything or, like, Uju just posted up like now we've got Tyja Campbell in the post. We've got another um, freshman Australian who can shoot a great three-pointer. And now Hannah Young has really come on and stepped up this year. She's another Australian, but this is her sophomore year. She was hitting threes, especially in the first game. I thought they would win the first couple of games, but it's just been surprising at how dominant their wins have been. Okay, so now we're going to discuss Damon Bruce, uh, sports host, uh, announcer for KNBR in San Francisco, and his attacks on women when discussing the Richie um, Incognito and Jonathan Martin case. And I guess I'll just give you guys a little snippet of what he said with the quote here. I enjoy many of, women, of the women's contributions to sports. Well, that's a lie. I can't even pretend that's true. There are very few, a small handful, of women who are any good at this at all. That's the truth. The amount of women talking in sports to the amount of women who have something to say is one of the most disproportionate ratios I've ever seen in my freaking life. But here's a message for all of them. All of this, all of this world of sports, especially the sport of football, has a setting. It's set to men. It's a man's world. 
you're a woman and that doesn't piss you off, I don't know what will. Yeah, I was like, he is insane. What, like, it's, what is he, like, does he think this is 1950s or what? Clearly. Like, I don't understand Clearly what. He, he didn't move on. Men like this are usually just so intimidated by women's success yeah. that they have to insult them to feel better about themselves. I just, like, I actually listened to the, like, the segment, and I was like, it's like, I can't imagine, like, driving in my car and listening, and this is what he's talking about. He's like, oh, just the way, like, women react to stuff, like, injuries, like, gruesome injuries. I don't know how many people, men are, like, happy to see a gruesome injury. Yeah. Like, I don't, I can't name, like, a decent human being that's like, oh, yes, that gruesome injury was so good. Like, even with Kevin Ware, like, I know so many boys who were, like, not, you know, who didn't want to see the replay, who didn't, you know. The only people I know who really wanted to see it was people who missed it. You know, even then, there was still, like, people was like, no, nah, I'm not trying to see that. Like, come on now, like, it's, his teammates was crying, there was people in the stands crying, men and women. Who, how is that just a woman's thing that they, we just react to grow, gruesome injuries? And he's like, they were like, oh my gosh, like, women are like, oh, I can't believe this happened. I'm like, shut up. Okay, so our next segment is going to be another pros versus Joes. Tamia, I, and our friend Shanae, who, as our extra, extra guest, um, are going to take on the pro special guest, Kaishan Jarrett, who is a safety for our football team. And we decided to do a dance off with him. Yeah. And for those of you who know Kaishan, or if you've seen number 34 on the field, you know you can see him dancing at any given moment. Like, he is a dancer. So it was only right that we did, you know, we got him in his environment outside of football. And so we got him, we played Dance Central, and you're going to see who won. So. Okay. And here's pick two. <laughs> so I'm supposed to guess who drew what? You're supposed to pick your favorite, and then you can guess who you think drew what. Uh, Keep in mind, I we got the pick, and then I stuck him. <laughs> Just like I did against Marshall. And then your legs no on the ground on that one. <laughs> Why <are> you laughing? Ah. Okay. Who do you think drew that? Uh, I'm bro, I don't know. Rachel? Yeah. yeah. Now we want to talk a little bit about our art challenge that we had last time. So, you know, if you didn't watch it, Rachel and I, we had two minutes to complete a drawing of our guest, Kashan Jarrett, um, against Merlin which will be tomorrow, against Merlin, um, making a, a 
a tackle or interception. We both chose to do interceptions, and so we had the audience at home um, decide. Yeah, the, and so we had the audience at home vote, and we also had Kashawn pick ultimately. So the audience at home pick picture number one, which you can also see on our Twitter. But Kashawn. But Kashawn picked picture number two. So, sort of it was a tie. Yeah. Which we want to reveal who's is who. Okay. So, number one belongs to me. Number one was definitely my picture. Um, so, shout out to the people at home who voted for mine. Number two was mine. Kaishan liked it better. Yeah, Kaishan liked some, it because he, he, her person was on the ground. Some people pointed out that my person didn't have arms. Me. I always pointed out that her person didn't have arms. But we have a very skinny guy over here and sort of a guy floating in air over here. He not floating in the air. What do you mean? I mean, he doesn't have a stomach. I just couldn't enjoy it, you know. But, you know, I like one of the audience, one of the voters at home said that he looks like he's ready to devour the Merlin player. And I was like, you know, that's a good... That's a good caption for the picture. He looks like he's ready to defy with him. And what people also missed out on, if you didn't look really well, was this guy got crossed up, okay? He got crossed up, he got confused, and then he got scared, so he said. But, you know, I, I guess it's a tie. It's a tie. But we'll have to do another art challenge some other time. Thank you all for voting, and thanks, Tashawn, for being our guest on this show. Okay, so that's all we have for you in this episode of The Squirt Zone. Make sure to tune in every Monday. Well, unfortunately, with Thanksgiving break coming up, we'll have to go on a two-week break. So, we'll have a double bad week, I guess. <laughs> um, don't look out for us either the next two Mondays, but look out for us on the following Monday, the third Monday, before class is in, so we can have, give you one last episode before, you know, we get into exams. Keep, keep it, it classy, keep, keep it real, and stay in the sports zone. zone.